Right then, before we can do anything else, we have to get the bandsaw out of the back door. It's way too heavy for me to push around, but luckily I now have some rails and a trolley, so that helped. I used a washer between two boards as a pivot for spinning it around, and I was surprised at how well that worked. This project has really been quite an adventure. There's lots more to share about getting the bandsaw up and running and all the interesting things I learned along the way. But I'll put those videos up in a while if anyone's interested. In the meantime, offering up the first proper log is some kind of a milestone. So here's a film about that. The saw will have to live outside because of the mess and the fumes it will make. But I'll have to make a cover for it as soon as I can. As you know, this saw is stationary and the log is moved through it on rolling trolleys. So I need to secure it firmly in position. I wanted to get some bolts sticking up in the concrete, but how to get them in exactly the right place? This is what I came up with. I lowered the frame down over the wet cement so I was sure the bolts would go in the right place. And that worked really well. Once the concrete had gone off, I was able to bolt down the frame and adjust it with packing pieces to get it upright. Then I used a series of short logs from the wood stack to practice on. I should make it clear, this saw did not work perfectly the first time I tried it. It took a few frustrating hours to identify and sort out some major problems, like this bowing cut. Okay, so it's much... It's, the problem is slightly different now because it's bolting upwards, which is great news. But as I say, I'll go into all that another time. After a while, I decided enough of these baby logs, let's go for broke and see what happens with the biggest log we have. Remember this one? Well, it was left in the yard with 150 feet and a barn between it and the saw. I made a handy device for lifting it, which worked fine. I put a short length of rail underneath and lowered the log onto the trolleys. But I only had two short lengths of rail, so I had to leapfrog them which led directly to my first derailment. You might have heard about it on the news. The ground was just too uneven for these loose rails. The plan is to have the rails permanently set up right through the barn, so they'll be useful for moving all sorts of things. But I can't afford that at the moment, so moving this single log took hours instead of minutes. Of course, if you'd like to help me by sponsoring a length of track, that would be really great. Do please check out our Patreon page. Anyway, eventually the log arrived at the part of the track which is finished. Like a harpoon in a dead whale, there was still this telephone line attachment embedded in its side. I dug it out. It's not the sort of thing you want to try to cut with a bandsaw blade. This is also the first real test of my log hold down designs. So finally, we're ready to go. No, wait, it won't go through the door. Actually, I expected this, of course. I need to make a new frame and door anyway. If only I had some suitable timber. And now it just fits through. One last job, cutting off a lump that sticks out. And now we're ready to go.
They're cleaning up for you, Tim. There are two ways this could go wrong. The blade could start diving down, resulting in a horrible wavy cut. Or the blade could get stuck, causing the log to jump sideways, breaking something important, and a wheel could come spinning off, and the blade might snap and come flying off at tremendous speed. All of which would have been exciting, but uh, I didn't really want that to happen. So I took things very slowly. Luckily nothing broke and the first cuts look pretty straight. Each cut is longer and wider than the last one. So the challenge for the saw is bigger each time. Yes, there is some rot around the edges of this spruce log. But most of it is completely sound still. In fact, the changing densities of the timber is probably a challenge to cutting straight. And of course, because it has branches up and down its length, it's full of hard, resinous knots. This is the widest cut I can make on this log. I can hardly lift the plank because it's so wet and heavy still. It's 12 feet long and 18 inches wide. And the cut is straight, which Yay. is a huge relief. So I declare this a success, and even though I would do a few things differently, it will certainly do what I want it to. How exciting!